Well, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you are doing it to, I am Bushcron Blitz, and I'm back with another dose of love, affection, and passion for World of Tanks Blitz and you human beings, boys and girls, hippies, and earthlings. This is the How to TD video, the second part of the How to TD, TD video, How to TD video, and we're going to be talking about survival and how you can survive and output massive amounts of damage uh, for the big dogs, the big TDs. Now, I have seen it posted all over the world that the game has changed to the point where TDs are becoming irrelevant and you can't snipe and all this. Well, I don't agree. Uh, I think it's a very narrow-minded view and I've been out there in the world playing nothing but big stuff for the most part for the past week. I've driven T95s, I've driven Jagdpanzer E100s, Jag Tigers, uh, FV183s, grills even. I've driven Object 704s, all these things because I wanted to give you guys a really honest opinion of how the game is progressing and how you need to play a TD to be successful in today's game. And there are all kinds of things you need to do. Not the least of which is actually pay attention and angle and post and be really, really map aware. You can see that 704, he just rolled out straight on and got smashed. And now we're gonna finish him up. We didn't give him opportunities like that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using this particular tank at the very start of the video because there is no slower tank destroyer than the T95. There is nothing that will inspire more frustration and loss of keyboards than the T95. But there's a few things you can do to minimize the problems. And it's not just the 95. We're gonna we're gonna have a look at the Yag. We're gonna have a look at all these things. You have to learn to angle and we're gonna have a look at that in just a second. You have to learn that when you have a medium tank in front of you, it is very rare that your best option is to drive towards them. As an old hand in TDs, I'm not driving towards this T-54, I'm driving towards the building on my right. Why? Because if my butt is up against a building, a medium tank cannot drive around me and put shots in the back. Why is that bad? Because you've only got a gun that faces forward. You don't have a gun that turns full circle for the most part in TDs. Now we're going to get to that more a little bit later. Right now, I want to talk about angling. That inset is the Jagdpanzer E-100 in relation to the T110E5 or the FV215B, they've all got about the same pen, uh, when they're looking at you with not AP, but heat, you can see if you angle it about 26 degrees, you are an incredibly tough pen. And I'm angling my tank the whole time until I'm ready to fire, and then I turn. And then I angle again, and I am always angling. And because of that, these massive T-Rex tanks cannot pen and I'm now angling to the E100 at all times constantly giving him that 26 degrees of angle until the gun is ready and then he can have a big buttload of AP rounds or heat in the side and he's done. You have to learn to do this in all your TDs, even TDs that don't have a lot of armor. Your highest effective armor and the best way you're going to bounce in this tank is by moving side to side. Now this is me in an object 140. Remember how I talked before about the worst thing you can do is move towards medium tanks. The guy in the Jagdpanzer E100 here is actually a really, really good player. He's in the BJ clan on the Asia server. And he doesn't have a lot of options because he's got two tanks against him. What he tries to do is turn towards me, get a hit on before him, past him. And to do that, he has to push. But he opens himself up to smart medium play which is driving behind him. And he does the right thing. He then immediately goes to the building. But I'm hit to that. I understand he's gonna try and get to the building. And I put myself between him and the building. And that's the end of the ball game for him. Despite the fact that he's an amazing driver, he has an in excess of 60% win rate. And he knows how to drive that tank extremely well. It's got such a huge glaring weakness that you cannot possibly come back from there if you're up against someone who knows what they're doing. And that is no reflection on how bad TDs are. It's just a reflection on you have to be very, 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 very careful if you push on mediums or heavies. When you push, you leave yourself wide open to dying, which is a bad, bad thing. Now you'll see here that Yag Tiger is in the open. I am not. 
I am going to push. I'm going to move towards that little bit of brickwork there. So he gets my track there, good and proper. Uh, and then we move up and we nut him. That's called posting. And we're going to have a look at posting with a couple of TDs in a sec. We're going to have a look at the Jag Tiger and the Jag Panzer E100 in particular. Because they are absolutely fantastic at it. And we're going to have a look at it going down the one channel of Fort Despair. Which is this map here. Because it is one of the classically amazing places in the game for posting and side scraping. Now you'll see there's a T-30 there in front of me. He's rolling forward. We are going to get our flat sides on the same angle as that building. We're going to let the gun pop out, and then we're going to push back in to the side of the building so he doesn't have a shot at anything but our very, very flat sides. And then we let the gun pop out, and we shoot him again. That is how you want to be playing your tank destroyers. Now, it's not all beer wine and Skittles. Sometimes you'll need to snipe, and that's fine because tank destroyers can snipe. There are still spots on multiple maps where you can snipe. The issue you are going to have is if you think that the way you want to play is just sitting at the back of a map, sniping by moving the reticle around with one hand while eating a packet of chips, as was so eloquent put to me on the actual servers, the NA forums. Um, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because you'll find that at times people will move and you have to move too. Now here we are going down the one channel. Look at me moving my big, big TD into the side of the cover and exposing only this very, very flat side. And when it's exposed, it's at an angle. And this poor old IS-3 is coming out sideways. You do not come out sideways. If you come out sideways, you're gonna get lit up. And we move up. But if we move up, there's nowhere to, to actually side scrape off, is there? Well, that's not strictly speaking true. What we can do is move up to the carcass of our good mate, the IS-3, and side scrape off that and we change targets immediately because that Jag Panzer is a much bigger problem than the Luba and there's an opportunity to kill that object 704 we do that and we're moving straight back into the carcass of the IS-3 we killed not giving him any shots bouncy bouncy smashy smashy you can do this all over the place you can in fact do that anywhere if you're in an open field and you've got to push forward and you've got the best option in front of you is a dead tank then move to it. It's not always going to save you, but what it's going to do is make it tougher for them to actually put fire into you. And it's going to mean that they have to stop and aim, and that can be the difference between winning a damage per minute fight and losing it. And we move straight back into our little carcass there, and we start, we're like a tortoise. We're moving our own shell along with us. There's our cover, it's in front of us. We're just going to keep pushing it along because that's how we roll. If there's cover, and you're a big monster, use your cover and live longer. Now, the Jagdpanzer E100 is incredible at this. It is just so well armored and so strong that you can side scrape like this to your heart's content. See that wall in front of me? When I'm angled up like this, there are very few tanks outside of big tank destroyers in the game who can comfortably get shots at me through that camouflage into weak points. That's important. Because uh, if you were just straight on, they would be able to see your lower glacis, and your lower glacis is a weak spot. All they can really see here is a super angle tank with super thick armor. Now, this is all about the big boys getting involved, getting up front, getting up close and personal, and delivering huge, big doses of alpha. But you can take this to the bank on just about any TD that you drive. Despite the fact that some of them are glass cannons and incredibly fragile, you will always do better when you angle and wiggle. Not only will you be more likely to bounce a shot, you're absolutely more likely to catch shots on your tracks. And that's an important distinction to make because some of your tanks have super weak lower glacises at the front of your tank. In fact, most tanks do. So when you're moving from left to right, the most common spot that you're gonna be hit is the lower glacis. And if you're moving and wiggling that tank like you saw the T95 at the start of the game, then you could possibly catch on your tracks and it's less likely to penetrate and do damage. It's also really good when you're in situations like this to remember that it's hard to circle of death a tank in these very, very small confines. You can square off, as in you can side hug a big TD and you can turn around him. And that can be frustrating, but that's part of the game. The 
biggest, most important part of driving a TD is setting shots up and actually understanding that you can't just go yoloing out. If you just go yoloing out sideways in a tank that's as big as a barn, you're gonna get hit from all sides. Once you see where everyone is and everyone's spotted, then you can base those decisions. Look at this Jagdpanzer E100. He's turning out sideways to try and come down here and get shots. And he's just absolutely left himself open. I'm now angling to the T-54 in front of me who wants to come out and get shots. I'm gonna turn back to the E100, set the shot up, finish him off, and then re-angle to the tanks in front of me. Because I like living and I like not dying and as you can see there, that angle, too much for that little T-54. And we just pull back and then let the gun slip around and we'll have shots again in absolutely no time. There's that 183, straight through him, angled, bouncing. Now that is a big shell. That's 320 mil or 310 millimeters of pen for that AP, AP round of that 183. And we bounced it clean as a whistle. Now, if you're actually gonna snipe, there's a couple of things you need to learn. Um, you, you might not know it, but I've done a lot of camo videos. Please look those up on the channel. Go to the game improvement section of www.bushkaonblitz.com and they're all listed there. Um, the best thing you can do is find some cover. If you are sniping, you can see here, if you get behind cover, you maximize your camo and you can see how much ammunition you can pour out without pause, constantly hitting targets, but you'll note, I'm using the camouflage. As soon as someone moves up on me, you have to make a decision and that will be, you're gonna hit them, but you can't sit there and just press the button and not expect there to be some form of cost. If someone's willing to move up on you and take the hit, you are gonna get spotted. He's looking for me. There I am. I've popped, I'm gonna get wrecked. Bang, take that. Now we kill him and we move down. We end up winning the game. But if there had been other tanks around when I was spotted, I would have been lit up completely. As you can see, these guys are on the hill. I am there. They are, for some unknown reason, completely devoid of the idea that once they're spotted, everyone else in the game can hit them. If you're a TD and you're just gonna sit at the back and do nothing else but sit at the back and people aren't spotting for you, then you're gonna get killed. And that's no one's fault but your own. Be map aware. Be aware of your camouflage and be a cocky bugger yelling timber just before you fire at that T-62A because that's what you do in this game. You're there to be a cocky bugger. I'm going to angle to these two tanks. I'm in the open field. I'm in a big, big tank with a big, big armor profile. And that's what this video is all about. Big TDs doing big, big alpha damage. Big meaty boys and girls. I don't mind. Um, that's it, boys and girls. That's, that's the how to TD video. You've got to be more aware. You can't blame your problems on the rest of the world. If you're driving a TD, there are certainly opportunities for you out there. And there's certainly ways to make big damage for your team. I drove them all week and I've got to say, my head's turned around on the swivel. I think there are absolutely opportunities for you to be successful in this game in a TD, especially the big boys. But you've got to be smart. You've got to play it the right way. And you absolutely have to be conservative with your hit points. And by that I mean you're always angling, you're always moving to cover, you're always going and resetting your camouflage whenever possible, and you're watching the minimap to figure out who's where. Because what you have on the end of your tank at the end of the day is an enormous big gun, as this poor old leopard is about to find out. I'm Bushcar on Blitz. Thank you very much for watching the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Consider sponsoring the channel. The Patreon link is on the channel bar at the top and there's a private telegram channel for all the patrons there is exclusive content for people on bushcronblitz.com uh, there's a password protector area area there for sponsors uh, there's currently three new videos up there so if you want to go along and check that out become a patron the world's your oyster i'm bushka you're wonderful i'm passionate about keeping you wonderful and providing you more tanking content stay safe on the battlefield